Film Sensei here. Today we're going to talk about how to make a slit scan effect similar to the one that you saw in 2001, A Space Odyssey. Now I got a couple of caveats here. One is, is that I'm sort of cheating to make this happen. I'm using a little cheat here, but remember, we don't cheat because we have to. We cheat because we want to, right? This is not exactly the same as the one you'll see in 2001 A Space Odyssey, but it's not meant to be. We just sort of want to, you know, create something that's similar to it as like an homage. And this is all done for free in HitFilm 4 Express. So we're going to start by creating a new composite shot. And for this model demonstration, we're only going to make it 10 seconds. And we're going to call it Slit Scan. And then click OK. And I'm going to create two new ones. Composite shot, and we're going to call this one left, and I'm going to create a composite shot, and we're going to call it right, okay? And what we're going to do is, in the left one, we are going to add a new layer, a plane, and we uh, just make it black, doesn't matter, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for the clouds effect under the generate, and now we have automatic clouds that are actually moving, but the problem is they're moving the wrong way, uh, and they're not moving fast enough, so I'm just going to change the speed from... 100 to negative 300. Yeah, I wanted to move really fast. Yeah, it looks lovely. All right. And then I'm going to take that and I'm going to copy that over to the right one as well. Okay. Now, under the slit scan effect, I'm going to take both the left and the right composite shots and I'm going to drop them right here in there. Okay. And I am going, here's the cheat. I'm going to use a quad warp effect and I'm going to drop it on both the left and the right. Okay, now I just need to change some and adjust some of the points a little bit. So, quad warp for left. On the top left, we're going to make this, leaving it at 640, negative 640 I mean, but we're going to make this 5,000, the Y number. And then on the top right, we're going to make this 5, but this is going to be about 250. Okay, and then on the bottom left, we're going to leave that, but we're going to change the Y to negative 5,000 this time. And the bottom right, we're going to again make it negative 5 and negative 250 and I changed I lied this is supposed to be negative 5 I don't know what I'm thinking okay so there's our first one you can kinda see how it's moving towards you like that now we're gonna do the same thing with the other one uh, but on the other side so on the right we're gonna start with the top left and this one's gonna be 640 this time by 5000 just like before and then this one is gonna be 5 and 250 and then the bottom left is going to be, uh, again, 640, but this time negative 5,000. And then the bottom right will be 5 again, and negative 250. So now you can see that they're all, yeah, looking lovely. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the checkerboard. Uh-huh. And it looks pretty good there, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, so now those clouds are moving, but you can see that they look exactly the same. That's not going to work. So I'm just going to go to the left, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag it over and then rescale it here. And that way, they will actually look different because they'll be on two different parts of their thing. And, you know, that's it. I mean, there's your slit scam right there. You can stop this tutorial and go play with that. However, I'm going to add a few other things just to kind of make it look a little cooler. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change some of the colors, okay? And I'm going to do that by adding a gradient, a color gradient effect, okay? And I'm going to drag that down on here, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, I'm just going to keyframe the start and, and end colors, and this is sort of a little cheat. I'm just going to pick two random colors that I want, okay? And then I'm going to go to the very end, and I'm just going to change those two colors to two totally random colors. I don't even know what I'm doing here. I'm just picking, right? Okay, and then I'm going to take that color gradient, and I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to bring it over to the right one, and I'm going to paste it right here in the right one also. And then, uh, again, I'm going to, oh, hello. I'm going to uh, uh, keyframe these. So starting and I'm just going to change the colors like there and oh you know what I did I know what I did yeah no that was fine and uh, let's change this one here to there yeah you know we don't really know what we're doing and you know we're just kind of making it up as we go along here and that's fine you know hey that's I do that all the time 
Uh, okay, so now they sort of are changing colors as they're as they're going down the line here, and so you can sort of see how they are, ch you know, shifting hue and everything like that. Okay, now one of the things that I want to do is I kind of want to add these like lightning popping looking things in there, and I played around with the lightning effect and some other things, and then I figured out, you know what, I can do another cheat. I'm going to use the star travel effect, and I'm going to drop that into my clouds again and so now as you can see there's all these little star things flying around out there okay but what I'm gonna do now is, is I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna add a an auto light flare auto light flare to it okay and then I'm gonna take that and I'm just going to uh, jack up the intensity as high as it can be, 5. I'm going to jack up the scale as high as it can be, which is 10. But the key is under hotspot position, I'm going to knock the threshold down to about 0.2. And now, as you can see, as things go on, there's sort of a pop and a light, light show up every once in a while, right? Yeah, that's really cool. Okay, and then I'm going to take this star travel and I'm going to copy it over to the right. Okay, but again, I want it to look different so I'm just gonna sort of drag it and make sure that it's in a different place so it looks you know completely and it's popping now when we go back to our slit scan now when you play this you can see that there's like lights popping you know it looks like lightning going on behind those clouds a little bit okay now to sort of make a uh, kind of tie it all together I'm gonna create a new composite shot I'm gonna call it uh, final and then I'm going to drag my slit scan effect or composite into that shot. And I'm going to get rid of the checkerboard again. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of more things. One is going to be a shake. I'm going to add a shake to that just so that it's kind of shaking around when it's gone. Okay. Also, I'm going to actually turn this thing. I'm going to rotate it. So I'm going to start it here at zero. And then when it gets over here, it's going to be at 90, okay? But the problem is, is that it's kind of small. And so what we have to do is we have to kind of expand the scale of it a little bit. Uh, so if I, you know, to about 215, I, I found is pretty good. And, and now it looks pretty sharp, right? Okay, another thing I like to do is I like to add a radial blur to it. And that just kind of gives it a... You know, it, it kind of blurs out the outside edge, but, you know, focuses your attention on the middle of the slip scan effect, which is pretty, pretty cool. And then I like to add a bulge effect, but here's what I found, and that is, is that you don't want a bulge effect because it goes out. Instead, you want a reverse bulge, right? And what I've found is, is if you knock it down to about, say, negative 0.6 or 0.65, oh, that just looks so cool. And that is your basic slit scan effect homage to 2001 a space odyssey if you have any questions or uh, anything like that drop them in the comments below otherwise thanks for watching